the British people have made a very clear decision to take a different path. The UK has voted to leave the European Union, making it the first country to vote to leave the modern EU. I think the country requires fresh leadership to take it in this direction. The next few years will be fraught with negotiations as the UK and the EU determine their new relationship. But the debate over Europe and the Union is far from over. The referendum underscores widespread dissatisfaction with the bloc, a sentiment that's not exclusive to the British. In terms of politics, economics, free trade and the freedom of movement, the future of the bloc remains uncertain. So what are the forces that will shape the future of the European Union? Firstly, Euroscepticism and the growing influence of anti-EU populism, Britain the most recent and obvious example, though the vote was close. But Brexit could set a significant precedent for the bloc and bring the biggest boost yet for the Eurosceptic movement. The other big effect of this election is not what's happened in Britain, but what will happen in the rest of Europe. Anti-EU political parties are gaining an influence across Europe. Echoing Donald Trump's rise in the US, an increasing number of Europeans are rejecting mainstream politics. Instead, they're attracted to anti-austerity, a tougher line on immigrants, weaker or no EU ties, and often closer links with Russia. In France, poll show populist leader Marine Le Pen, the self-proclaimed Madame Frexit, poised to win the first round presidential vote next year. In Austria, the anti-immigrant, anti-EU Freedom Party's Norbert Hofer nearly won presidential elections this spring. Despite losing in the runoff, it was still one of the best showings for a far-right candidate in Western Europe since World War II. And there have been strong gains in national, state and local elections in Germany, Slovakia, Denmark and Poland. Their message is becoming more potent amid economic instability, a migrant crisis and a recent wave of terror attacks. Number 2. Economic Instability Since the financial crisis, Europe's economic growth slowed dramatically. Europeans have endured years of austerity and cuts to public services. Despite the European Central Bank providing billions of euros of liquidity, economic growth is anemic and the spectre of deflation hangs across the region. Unemployment rates remain stubbornly high, over 20% in Spain and Greece. Youth unemployment is worse. Although there have been some upticks in the past quarter or two, Europe's economic growth is at best sluggish. In the final quarter of 2015, Eurozone GDP was still below its pre-crisis peak, whereas the US was almost 10% above its peak of late 2007. Plus, there's the never-ending saga of Greece and its debt problems. We will compromise, we will compromise, and we will compromise in order to come to a speedy agreement. But we're not going to end up being compromised. Multiple bailouts later, its debt-to-GDP ratio remains at 182 percent. The UK's decision to leave the EU will strengthen those parties across Europe that argue that the EU is an economic failure. One bus, one bus, one bus. You mean no bus? No bus. Number three, the migrant crisis, perhaps the biggest facing Europe. The UN has warned that the large numbers of refugees and migrants arriving in Europe could be just the tip of the iceberg. Germany's open arms policy towards Syrian refugees resulted in more than one million asylum seekers entering the country last year. Say loud, say clear, refugees are welcome here. But not everyone is happy about this. So-called anti-Islamization protests have been held across Europe by groups that view refugees from Muslim countries as a threat to European cultural and social values. The record wave of people arriving is also putting immense pressure on countries on the periphery. At least 550,000 refugees and migrants arrived in Italy and Greece in 2015 alone. Migrants must claim asylum in the EU country that they first enter. Troubles policing Europe's external borders, along with some government's refusal to process new arrivals within their own asylum systems, have stretched this agreement to breaking point. Germany has said it won't apply this rule to Syrian refugees and that asylum seekers should be distributed fairly across the border control-free Schengen area. But some European states have resisted mandatory quotas, tightened their borders, and some even built fences along their borders to keep people out. This tension means that the Schengen Agreement that allows passport-free travel within the region is in danger. 
And then there's Turkey. The EU struck a deal with Turkey in an attempt to stop the flow of refugees, giving more fuel to the anti-immigrant groups and Eurosceptics who say Turkey's membership would threaten the continent's security. In truth, though, there's no near-term prospect of Turkey entering the EU. But after a series of terror attacks on European soil, security fears are front and center. Number 4. Terrorism The Paris attacks that killed 130 people in November underscored fears of the threat from within Europe. The assaults were partly perpetrated by French and Belgian nationals and plotted in Belgium. In March, 32 people were killed in the Brussels attacks on the airport and subway system, the second major terrorist attack by Islamic State on a European capital in four months. Politicians that have called for tougher EU policies on migration, asylum and border protection said the attacks proved them right. In Italy, the anti-immigrant Northern League called for the immediate closure of borders and of mosques. In France, Ms. Le Pen urged stepped-up border controls and police sweeps. In Austria, far-right politician Heinz Christian Strach said the attacks showed why, quote, irresponsible mass immigration from the Arab world and open EU borders must be ended once and for all. The UK's decision to leave the bloc will only but strengthen those who wish to scale back the ambition of the European Union.